Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another monthly Heart to Heart, which is Less Leg More Hearts virtual peer support group led by yours truly. Um, my name is Tina Hurley. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, the organization that helps amputees. If you know an amputee or you are an amputee that just needs a community support resources funding, um, you check out our website, lesslegmoreheart.com, and you can just go to the contact section and do amputees in need, submit your information to our forum, and our amazing team of volunteers will get in touch with you and answer all questions that you might have and direct you on a better journey. Um, today, we have a lot of new faces and a lot of folks from our program, volunteers from our organization, and I think it's for good reason because we're talking about a pretty hot topic, uh, pun intended, a summer-related topic, things about water. I was trying to think of a really good name, uh, you know, the water world for amputees, but there's a lot of stuff, showers, beaches, lakes, pools, um, and sand, and there's a lot of stuff that I've done wrong in the seven years that I've been an amputee, and there's a lot of wonderful products that I've come across in the last um, six or so years, and I wanted to be able to share those things with you and for us to all meet as a forum to discuss or sh collaboratively share um, knowledge so we can get it out to folks so that people hopefully suffer a little bit less than I have and uh, some of the new amputees that are just starting on this journey. It's nice to kind of get a step ahead. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you all for being here tonight, and I want to just jump right in. The first thing that is obviously the most important is safety, right? So salt water um, and chlorine are, are very corrosive to our prosthetics. And so I actually have a crazy story. I was eight months pregnant and my ankle was creaking, my foot was creaking, my prosthetic, and I wasn't going to the prosthesis regularly those few months because I was gaining a lot of weight and I didn't want to, you know, worry about getting adjustments that's just going to go away because all of a sudden I'm going to lose that weight because I'm having a baby. But this creaking was happening every step. So finally, I got my little wrench and I took the screws out of my prosthetic and the entire inside of my pylon and all the screws was completely rusted. And actually there was a crack in the shaft of my pylon that could have led to a fall that would have been catastrophic, of course, because I was carrying a child. But I had not rinsed my leg and done some of these aftercare things that are super important. And because of that, um, the rust kind of took over. So not only are prosthetics super expensive, but they're kind of finicky. And if you want to enjoy the world, especially the water world, you have to figure out the things that you need to do to make yourself safe in the long term. Um, and I think that being said, obviously, it's a disclaimer that you should be working close with your prosthetist about options for water legs and also for the aftercare that we're going to go through, um, I think, pretty extensively. But um, those of you that are above the knee amputees, you may have electric components. Of course, you need to work closely with your prosthetist to make sure that um, it's water resistant or it's waterproof um, because uh, obviously electric stuff and water don't go, don't go hand in hand. Um, and then I wanted to share a fun fact with you that I found um, back in the day, legs were made from steel. And now, of course, we've gotten a little bit smarter, but despite the fact that we've changed to uh, water, more water-friendly items, any kinds of chlorine or um, salt will get in the tiny nooks and crevices and, um, and really do deleterious stuff to your hardware. So let's figure out some hacks to make it a little easier for everybody. I wanna, I wanna share a quick story, and some of you might be able to relate. Back when I became an amputee, I, you, know, you have your, your sock that goes over the component of the foot, and then you have your foot shell that goes over that. And I didn't know any better. And I unfortunately didn't have the most wonderful first prosthetic um, experience and I wasn't really educated. And so I'd go out walking. I love the beach. It's like my favorite happy place. And I'd go out and I would either take my leg off and I would crab walk to the water, which is exhausting. And then get into the waves and try to manage uh, balancing out to the water, super unsafe, and then have to knee walk back on the sand. Or I would just walk through the water with my prosthetic foot on and my foot would get really heavy and the salt and the sand and everything would get all in the crevices. And so I started to take plastic wrap and I started to plastic wrap my prosthetic foot all the way up to the pylon and then put um, waterproof tape over that and then a tube sock and then tape over the tube sock just to keep the water out. Like this is really what I did within the last five years. And so I had this huge bag full of stuff that I'm bringing with me. And it was like a nightmare because as much as you try, you know that the sand is going to get on the inside of your sleeve and inside of your liner. And sand is like the worst thing to get on those because it's so hard and gritty to get off unless you have something to rinse and wash it off. Um, so it was a huge problem. Um, and I'm hoping that some of the things I've found will make your life a little bit easier. 
uh, some, some key points. If you're headed out to any water thing, and even if it's a shower, make sure you guys are on mute. Um, you wanna make sure that you have um, a plan for the entry and the exit and the aftercare. So when I became an amputee, I didn't realize that it was there was so much pre-thought into everything. And actually becoming an amputee has been one of the best experiences for me than becoming a mother, because it's kind of similar for those of you that have kids, you can't just get up and go anymore, right? You have to like think through all the needs that are going to occur. And so I had to get used to that prior to having a kid just by doing the leg thing. So what is your access going to be? Do you need accessibility equipment? Um, are you going to wear the leg? Or are you not going to wear the leg? What kinds of extra towels or spray bottles or, um, what um, appliances or socks are you going to need? Do you need extra socks? Should you be bringing your own key for the, the screws on your leg? Do you have an extra liner if something were to happen and you were to rub up against a rock? Like, do you have a flotation system in place or an extra pool noodle and tape so that you can make your leg buoyant in the event that you're going to be out in open water? You don't want to drop a thirty-five dollars to $100,000 leg in the water. That's going to be a really expensive uh, snorkel trip for someone to view <laughs> a coral reef growing out of a prosthetic leg. So these are all things you have to keep in mind and kind of put together a, a bit of a go bag for these occasions that for me is pretty universal, whether I'm going to the pool, the lakes or, um, or ocean. So I'm going to be walking through a little bit of that uh, as well. I want to just say something that I feel like most people know, but for some of you younger um, and stronger folks, hopping used to be a thing that I did a lot until I fell a lot. <laughs> and I just want folks to kind of get out of the habit of, of doing it um, because it's just a matter of time. And I feel like uh, residual limb trauma and slipping on those surfaces uh, is inevitable. It's almost like people that have motorcycles, they say there's two types, the, the types that you know have dumped and the, and the types that will dump. Uh, it's kind of like the same for a hopping amputee. I think it's like, it's just that time that one time you didn't think of it so let's let's figure out some better plans than that um and then obviously you guys know that water and pool decks and boat um decks and rocks and all of that are super slippery obviously you want to exercise caution and the whole reason that you're here is because you you want to get some more information so that you are cautious so i applaud that but just don't be in a rush and um make sure that you really think through each step and take the extra hand. I know a lot of us are, it's really hard to ask for help. Um, and I think that if you have someone that's there that can give you a hand or can carry a thing for you, so you can be a bit more on guard, just take it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to save you a world of trouble. Um, so just by a show of hands visually for the folks that are here, who wears their leg or wants to wear their leg if they're not yet in a prosthetic in the water? Get them up in front of the camera so I can see. So one, two, three, okay. So about half. So of the folks that didn't raise their hands, can you raise your hand if you're an above the knee amputee? Yep, makes sense, okay. All right, that makes sense. And it, th for the people that just raised their hands that are above the knee amputees, is it because you don't have a waterproof leg? Raise your hand if, if the answer is yes. Sandy has a butt. What do you got, Sandy? I have one, the socket doesn't fit right now. And um, if it's pool, it's easier without the leg. Okay. I'll be honest. Okay. Ocean, you need it to get into the water. Yeah. Okay. Kaya, what do you got? I was going to say basically the same thing. I feel like it's, I don't have one that's waterproof, but I've explored models that are, and I just feel like it's easier to swim without. Okay. What do you got, Roni? Yeah. There's a difference between waterproof and water resistance, right? I think mine is only water resistant. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Chase? I'll say I just actually uh, canceled a trip down to Florida this week because I was supposed to be on, well, like you said, one of my favorite places to agree with you is on the beach and just walking in the sand and, you know, going in the ocean. But I was afraid of, because uh, I'm, only, I'm only four and a half months into being an amputee, so was not, you know, used to, I'm still using crutches with my uh, prosthetic on and everything. So being on the sand, being in the water, I wasn't quite sure. And I can't remember who just said it. I'm sorry, but I, I actually prefer being in a pool without it. It's just easier to float around. So. And it's nice for the other side of your body, the leg and back and everything to decompress a bit with the buoyancy, right? Right. 
Yeah, you don't have to right there, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll get into some of that. Um, so for those that prefer to take your leg off, I wanted to mention, you know, obviously if you're out in open water, like beaches or or lakes, there are there's a growing interest, I think, in equity. Um, and I think that people are um, starting to at least have rentals for beach chairs nearby. And there are at, regionally at least one um, like accessible beach that has those um, wheelchair, uh, I don't even know what you call them, not ramps, but sort of like carpets for wheelchairs that go out on the um, beach. So my advice to you is if you, if you really do wanna visit something like a beach or, um, or a lake, if you can do a little bit of the extra legwork to research in your area, what's available for DME, um, like beach wheelchairs or any nonprofits in your area, like there's one incredible one out in Miami, um, but there's there's a ton of them locally. There's other support groups like, you know, Amp Surf is one around the country that does um, amputee surfing trips for people, but they have a bunch of, of beach chairs that they rent from different companies around. So just look into the resources that are available to you so that you can still experience it um, if you're not going to have your leg on. If you're a wheelchair, um, if you're someone that would do a wheelchair, but you don't like the idea of all that extra work, have you guys heard of side stick crutches? Just nod your head if, you, if that's a name you've heard of. No. So side sticks are a Canadian forearm crutch and they have hydraulics in them. They're kind of pricey, 700 to 1,000. If anybody ever wanted assistance with that kind of a thing, of course, you can submit your information to Less Leg More Heart. But I will drop a link in the chat to, they have um, special tips. They have a bunch of accessories and the tips, you can get them for sand or for snow, but essentially the the end is a, is a disc. It's a circle disc and it actually, um, displaces the sand so that it's um, almost like a snowshoe, but for but for beach sand on crutches. And it really has been amazing. I mean, I, I toured through Hawaii for three weeks on the on these um, these crutch tips. So Sandy, go ahead and I'll, I'll drop the link while you're talking. I actually um, went out to the other room to grab my crutches because I have a pair of sand crutches. And I think this might be kind of what, and I wanted to show it to you guys. I have to leave like at three at six thirty because I'm something else. But so I just bought these on um, Amazon. They're called sun discs, and you just take them on, put them on, and take them off the bottom. And I've used them on the beach, and they work. Yeah, they really. That's work. that's that's literally like the bottom of the yeah. of the side sticks, and I think that that design is super super helpful. And so if those are more affordable. That's a great suggestion. If someone already has side sticks or would want the side sticks anyway for the additional features of the hydraulics, just know that they also have the clip uh, on them. But for something isolated, like a specific sand venture, that's awesome. Can you, um, Sandy, can you drop the link before you go or can you send the information? I can find it for you. It's okay. I will send, I will put it in the chat. I'm not good at dropping links. That's okay. Go ahead and just put it in the chat for everybody and that would be wonderful. Thank okay. you so much. Um, so that's a really great one for you guys. I also wanted to mention that there are products for, um, these ones are specifically for the below the knee. So above the knee, I think you're, there's, there's a few products that are actually being created now for above the knee, um, like armless crutches, but they're, they're not, I haven't seen them in production yet, but for below the knees, of course you have your, um, eye walk. And uh, Liquid Limbs makes a navigator. Both of those are armless crutches that you put your knee in uh, and your, your stump residual limb sort of um, just bends underneath on padding. So for above the knees, I think crutches are the best tip. Anybody here in this room that's an above the knee have an experience aside from crutches or wheelchair that they utilize for water? No, yeah, I haven't really found much either. Um, okay. So moving through some of the um, products, and I think that that's going to be something that you guys are really excited about. Um, have you guys heard about uh, waterproof like booties for your prosthetic feet? No. So there's a new company. Uh, well, I shouldn't say new. There's an, an amputee that runs a company called Pro Armor. They're out of New Zealand and they made this. It's Technically, it's it's waterproof, but the reason it's water, they can't say 100% waterproof is because the top of the device that you secure, you would need to sort of tape it to your pylon to make it fully waterproof, but I've used it and it completely is waterproof the way that you tape the top. I'm going to actually put a link for you guys to check it out while we're chatting. 
So Pro Armor makes two different um, covers for prosthetic feet. There's one called the light, which is, uh, I took it off of my foot because I had to rinse it. One um, goes inside of a sandal shoe, et cetera. It's for people that want to hike or you, maybe you're, you're biking and it rained earlier, or maybe you want to walk around the beach or um, anywhere murky, muddy, sandy, and you don't want to deal with all the foot shell stuff that comes along with it. Um, this literally slips on your foot. And then you have these Velcro straps that go on your pylon. Like I said, I, I tape the top of mine with a waterproof tape and nothing gets in it. And then you literally finish your excursion, take it off, rinse it in the sink and air dry it. And it's, it's amazing. They make a, um, a plus version. Also, you can check it out on their website. I just dropped the link. The, the second, the plus version has a, um, a, a sole in it. So for folks that wanted to, um, you know, when you take your shoe off and you put a sock on, it changes the angle of everything and nothing feels right. And it bumps and bruises as you walk through. This gives you a little bit of a lift like a shoe would, but it also has both of the versions have really good um, adhesive, like um, anti-slip anti -slip technologies on the bottom. So um, definitely check out those products. Again, any amputee that's here today or anybody that's seeing this information that thinks that one of these items could improve your quality of life, but you have a financial barrier, please submit your information on our website because I don't want financials to be a problem with you guys getting what you need to enjoy life. But check out Pro Armor for sure. That's been something that I found that really helps. In terms of foot covers, you, you guys have your like inflatable, you know, the cuffs you can buy on Amazon and other places where it goes up over the leg. It's almost like the cast cover and you pump up and it inflates the top and it stops essentially any water from getting in. Also sort of stops your blood flow. Has anyone here used those? Show of hands. I'm the only one. Okay. They're clunky and they're, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. If you're someone that's going to go in the water, I would prefer one of the um, hydro sleeves. Has anyone here used any of the water sleeves you can get from your prosthetist? No. Okay, good. Let me drop this information. So um, you have, uh, there's these waterproof covers that I was mentioning. The challenge with them is that they inflate above the, around the top and it really cuts your sort of like, it's uncomfortable. Um, and then if, if there's little tears, usually their fabric isn't very um, thick and it will tear. And then all of a sudden, all of your componentry gets wet. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. I'm interested to see if people have comments that are watching this back online. But the rubber suspension sleeves are pretty cool. So um, there's, a comp there's a sleeve called Active Sleeve, A-C-T-I-V Sleeve. Um, a Michigan Sleeve or Autobach has an actual swimming sleeve that keeps water from entering the socket. So now that we, you know, you cover both sides, right? It's like, you got to get the waterproof technology for the actual prosthetic yourself if you're in above the knee or just a straight pylon. Sometimes they'll put to a, um, a socket. And then you have to figure out how to make the top where your socket is waterproof. And then you have to figure out how to make the, the foot part waterproof if you need that. So we've covered bottom and now we're kind of moving up. The sleeve itself is like a really um, thick sort of snug silicone and it goes over um, the sleeve that you have and it really holds. And um, I've used it in water, like swimming, and I haven't gotten water in it. If it's too big, the only downside is that if you use it over time and you don't do it appropriately, where you just pull the bottom to put it over your socket and you roll it up each time nice and smooth, if you're you know, pulling on it, it will loosen over time. And at some point it's going to be too loose that a water bubble, or I mean, air bubble is going to get in and a little bit of water is going to get in. So yeah, go ahead, Sandy. I'm sorry. Did you say this was for both below and above or just for below? It's for both. You can cut them to size as needed. So I've had, I don't know what your prosthetist will say, but I've had people that are above and below that use um, components of this and above the knees, depending on the length of their um, limb may have some challenges just because of other stuff that's close by. And um, so it, it, it would depend on your habitus and also how long your limb is. But I would say check out the sleeves and see if it, you'd be a candidate based on how I, I think people have like cut it in half. Um, and I don't think you're so high because I know you personally that it wouldn't work for you for you yourself. So um, and we can chat offline about it, too. Um, yeah, you guys should check out the sleeve. So it's, I'm going to drop these in the chat for you. So the active sleeve, the Michigan sleeve, and then the Autobach swimming sleeve. Does anyone else know of any sleeves or socket waterproof systems or 
accessories that you use? No, yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm glad that I'm covering it for you. Um, there are uh, things you can do for prosthetics, right? So the thing that I'm not gonna be claiming to be a specialist on is every make and model of water resistant and waterproof legs that are out there. I will say that each company is trying to come up with um, things for people, but at the very base model, if you will, having a socket mounted to a pylon, mounted to a foot that's waterproof, is the cheapest and easiest way for a prosthetic to be made for an amputee to be able to get in the water, whether you have a knee or you don't have a knee. The question is whether you have a team member or clinician that would be willing to put something together like that for you. And so that's gonna be contingent upon your relationship with them and really oftentimes what they're able to bill. Um, there are a lot of good guys out there, but there's also a lot of people that are just wanting to sell the systems that are making more money. So that could be a good red flag or a good um, just indicator for you in terms of the team that you're working with and, and how willing they really are to help improve your quality of life. If you have old leg systems, sometimes people will use their old leg systems as their swim leg or their shower leg because they're not as concerned that if there's a little bit of water or rusting that occurs in screws that they're using it every day, all day, and it has the same wear and tear, the same risk, that would be something you always would still want to take to your prosthetist to get serviced and have the screws taken out and like rinsed off and, and replaced if needed. Before I talk about some of the, the aftercare and some of the, for, for me, pro tips that I've come across, I wanted to open it up to you guys um, to see what specific questions you guys may have about about your circumstances. So you're here because you had a, a curiosity for some reason, maybe you have an upcoming trip, like Chase, you canceled a trip. Are there specific fears or scenarios that you're thinking of when it comes to approaching a body of water or approaching an excursion that relates to water that we can kind of figure out as a group or talk through? I know someone's got something and I'm gonna make you awkward pause. Here we go. Chase, what do you got? Well, mine wasn't so much, um... Fears. It was just like I said. I'm still really new to the the situation, so I just really didn't want to. I was going down there with like six other people, and I felt like it was going to be a little bit of a debt, you know, a little dead weight and that kind of stuff, and you know, not be able to, you know, carry things down to the beach. And um, what about actually getting in the water? And I don't know how the prosthetic would hold up in the ocean, and afraid of you know a wave coming and knocking it off of me. <laughs> you know, all, all the things you think about, you know, could happen. Uh, probably would happen to me for some reason. You know. So that was just my thought of not, not really doing it. And they, they, they all still went. I just lucky one who stayed home by myself with my dog, you know? I know. Yeah. And honestly, it's, you're not alone. All of us have missed big events um, as amputees, tra especially travel related ones. And then add to that water stuff, because like you mentioned, it's like, you're not fears, but you're the apprehensions about being a burden to other people or having other people have to accommodate you consistently or, risking injury, like you said, or just all these things kind of take away the fun of it, right? It's like, it makes it less fun to consider what you're doing because there's just now so much added sort of stress in a way to it. And I'm hoping that through some of the journey that you're with, especially with Less Like More Heart, that we can talk about it enough, that it's demystified enough and you have enough tools that um, it feels less hard to tackle. But I will still say, Chase, that even still, you know, I've got a toddler and I go to the beach, but even still, it, it is kind of a whole thing. You know, it's never, never suit the easiest. You know, I have to still get, at least now it's, it's easier. Like I'll, I have a tight sleeve and so I can just throw on my pro armor, which to be honest with you all, I got like six months ago. I throw on my pro armor, I, I tape the top of it and then I make sure I have my tight sleeve on. I bring an extra thing of waterproof tape in my bag. And then I just go and I deal with it after, but then after, like we're going to talk about, you have to, there's a whole process of making sure everything's cleaned out. So I can appreciate your comment. I can appreciate the, the nature of all of that. And I'm hoping that as we get through the rest of the hour, you'll have a few more tips in there. Thank you for sharing. And one other thing is, I don't know how it works with, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm sure somebody else has the same way, just the suction of it, you know, and just coming off because mine gets loose now and I'm, having to wear a sock underneath it, uh, getting it tighter. So getting that wet as well is not a, you know, not 
ideal just you know i guess the best way to put it and, yeah so. i have actually i'm i live in about 11 to 12 ply because of my vascular condition i can't have too tight of a fit because i only have collateral blood flow so i'm i'm constantly in pretty thick sock and i go surfing um and i just wear my sleeve with waterproof tape at the top of my sleeve on my skin and never get water in um and then if you so in the event that you do get water in, the sock is still above your liner. It's unlikely to get in your liner itself because the liner is circumferentially, have, it has friction around your, your whole leg. If you were to, so I wear my, I have a silicone liner. I wear that in the water if I take my leg off and no water gets in it at all. If I put my socks on and then my prosthetic on and I just do a lip of um, waterproof tape over the top of the sleeve on my skin, I can do all the things, surf, go in the ocean, jump waves, and my socks never get wet. There's been one time that I skipped the tape and a little bit got underneath my liner and it got my socks wet and the downs, it would never pop my system off because remember my, my sleeve is still intact and my, so you still have enough there that if you're not. I don't even know what you'd need to be doing, like kicking your legs aggressively or someone grabbing on your foot and yanking it off. I and mean, it would have to be like a really, really odd story to have your leg come off still. But the challenge then is if the socks are wet, now they're thinner and you can get some blistering and some um, like soft tissue trauma to your residual limb that can hurt. Like I actually had a big bursa once because I let it go for too long that one time that my socks got wet. So I always travel with extra dry socks so that if I do feel, you'll feel a little bit of the water get in if it were to, and I'll just jump up on the beach and I'll throw on some um, dry socks. And so that goes in your go bag again, but um, yeah, more, more from Mark, what do you got? Uh, no, I was just, uh, cause I'm getting ready to start boating again. And uh, so, but it's gonna be in fresh water. But I guess my question is, so you would like put the pro armor sleeve on, I'm a below knee. So I put the pro armor sleeve on and then what, then the uh, the waterproof booty or something on the bottom without a shoe or without it. And then I could like boat and then I could, and then I could, you know, if I had to like say pull into a beach somewhere or something like that, you throw an anchor out, you got to get in the water, you know, if you're not at a dock. So I guess that's, that's the main thing. It's held me up from boat for the last couple of years now. Yeah, to answer your question, and that's exciting. I'm excited for you. Um, to answer your question, what foot do you have? Do you know? Um, uh, no, I don't. Okay. So you would just want to make sure with your prosthetist that the foot that you have is, there's no electrical component. No, yeah, there's no electrical component. Okay. It's, so just a, it's just a carbon fiber spring, basically. Okay. If that's the case, um, what I would do, and this is what I do do, I use the pro armor and we don't get paid from them at all. I'm like, I'm saying their names so much. I feel like I should just yeah. give that disclaimer. Uh, I just think they're a great product. Uh, and so I, I put on the Pro Armor Plus, but the reason I wear the Plus, and that's the one with the sole, is because I prefer to be barefoot or I surf or walk through the beach barefoot on my other foot, and it's got the little bit of a heel lift. So if you want to, if you're going to be in a boating shoe on your other foot mostly, then yeah. I would then I would recommend getting the Pro Armor Light, which is the one that doesn't have the sole. And you can use it almost like a sock would be, um, and that goes inside the shoe. And the only reason that that would be helpful is because it won't change the angles of either of your feet because your shoe's going to be the same size, right? So if you're going to be barefoot, I'd say go with the Pro Armor Plus because it's got the sole. And if you're going to have a shoe, I would do the Pro Armor Light. And then on top, if you have your sleeve in place and your sleeve is snug, the sleeve inherently is waterproof because the inside layer is not but it's, cloth, it's cloth on the outside though right yeah, yeah it's just gonna dry okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and so i would just take some waterproof tape you can get it over the counter you can even order it order on amazon and i do um like i usually do two or three layers just around my thigh not tight but just just enough and i i cross it 50 percent each so you know you know what i'm saying you do one loop cross it or 50 do one loop right, and then, right. and i never have a problem so what if I wanted to, okay, so now I'm boat riding and I want to go wakeboard. So <laughs> I love this lifestyle, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> but anyway, so I want to go wakeboard. 
you know, so I won't, I won't try and ski anymore, but I, I can wait for it, I say, because I can get two feet on that, right? Okay. So use the pro armor with the, uh, the light one, right? Do it like you would be barefoot. Could I, I be barefoot? If you're going to be barefoot, I'd go pro armor plus. That's when it's got the, hose, the, the heel or the. That's bottom. what I surf in. That's what I would prefer. Because yeah. it's basically the same thing, but you're just holding on to a rope, you know. Yeah. I'm familiar. That's awesome. That's what I would do. And, okay. and then, you know, you can troubleshoot from there. Like I've, you know how um, the inside of appliances has like the little plastic rim sometimes to prevent back, you know, water slipping back. Right. I've even taken plastic um, tubing and I've actually put it on the inside of my sleeve. So, you know, sleeves have different lengths. And if you mount your sleeve higher up on your socket, then you get more up your leg, right? Right, right. So if you mount it a little bit higher, not high enough where water can get in the bottom, because of course you have a strap or tape on the bottom that's holding it down, but just pull it up like an inch or a half an inch so that you have a little bit more at the top, fold the top of your sleeve down on your thigh, and then give yourself a little Rubber band around, around yeah. and yeah. then put it over and then do the tape. And then now you've got two. And you still get suction. You still get suction because I'm on yeah. the vacuum system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as you're not doing it on the very end of it where there's no contact right. with the end of the sleeve of your skin, you have no problem with it. And then I would just say for people, this is the disclaimer, like if people are diabetics or they have significant nerve damage that has decreased the sensation of their skin in that area, that they would want to do frequent skin checks just to make sure with any new system or any new thing that they're not going to wear down or irritate their skin. And then you would need to find which material works best for you. So it's kind of like trial and error, but like would for you, um, you know, cotton, like a ring of cotton be better for you or would, you know, cutting the, the neck of a shirt and using that on the inside be better for you, you know? So it's like, what does your skin react to? It could be different from other people, but I would definitely try that kind of like inner wick concept. Yeah. Well, that's always been my biggest concern is my leg just filling up with water and then I just could, you know, just be a pain. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, my, my leg is never like the bucket of my socket has never filled with water and popped my leg out. Cause you guys have to think about like hydrostatic forces, right? Hydrostatic pressures are going to favor your, the weight of your body. So you, the water is still going to be being displaced by the gravity that's pulling you into your leg. Even when you're in the water, you're more buoyant, but you still have weight. So that that's helpful. And I'm so glad. I wish I could tell my, my physics teacher from high school is now passed on. And physics was so hard for me, but I think that would have been a proud moment for him. <laughs> so what, have you ever tried, you've got a levitate blade also, right? I do. Have you tried that out I, on the water and swimming yeah. with that? Yeah, I always go in Is the that, pool with my running blades. You always go to the pool with your running blade? Yep, always. It's I've, easy. Got a levitate, I've got a levitate blade also. Yeah, I have. So I have my running blade set up with my sleeve deflected down and it's in my pool. Because when my toddler... He, he can't say pool. He goes cool. And then I go pee, 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 pool and he'll go pee, pee, cool. And so that means like, we got to go to the pool now. Like if I, it's not, we can't wait two minutes. So I jump in my car. I've got my running leg and I just literally pop my regular leg off. I don't have time to put on my pro armor and do that whole thing. So I just jump into my running leg, run it up, you know, run the sleeve up and go in. I don't even use, um, and this is my personal story. I don't even use tape when I'm in the pool. You don't have a ton of waves crashing in and out but i and i jump in the pool with my son i'm walking around with my son with, I, with I, the levitate with the levitate blade levitate blade sleeve that obviously because hey, 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 right, that's, that's something i wouldn't have tried on my own all right yeah. yeah running blades are great for that obviously you rinse it like you would anything else and we'll talk about aftercare in a second but it's just one less step right it's one less thing and we're always having to take so many extra steps. That well, there's no components there to really hurt. Everything's just fiberglass. You know? Yeah, and there's no foot shell to have to, you know, make sure there's aired out and all that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing, Mark. Thank Who you. else has, yeah, questions specific? Roni, what do you got? I know you, you have some water-related question. You're on mute, babe. There you go. Well, actually, um, I'd like to go on a charter boat fishing. And since I've been amputated, uh, it's been like almost 11 years now, I've only gone one time. And um, it's more so the balance I'm concerned about. You know, if you're on a charter boat, you know, you got the rails and everything, you're leaning over the, the railing, whatever. It's just like sometimes you get water and the floor is slippery. Mm -hmm. So my concern is more about the balance more so than the foot getting wet. 
because yeah. I'm a boat. It's just getting that balance and being comfortable um, while the boat is sometime in choppy water. Yeah. Does anybody have any experience with that specific circumstance? I, I've done balance related things, not that specific endeavor. I'll just pause for a second. Does any, has anyone ever done anything like that? No. What I, what comes to mind first for me, Roni, is um, obviously base level conditioning and balance stability drills with either physical therapy or an adaptive an adaptive trainer. I think that that would make you feel your most capable. Um, yeah. And we have folks we can link you to if if that's something you want to pursue. The other yeah. thing, the other thing is even with the best condition, sometimes just there's a crazy wave and you know it's going to buck you and. I wonder if there are, what I would do is consider some kind of a harnessing system. Like- I thought about that too. Yeah, like, is there something you can snag in like the rock climbing world that you could throw around one of the handrails, one of the, and, you know, strap it around each thigh kind of so that in the event that you were to fall sort of down, you're not gonna hit the deck. You're gonna be able to suspend sort of, um, I would think, you know, when you go like, zip lining and they've got like the straps you put your legs through yeah i wonder if something like that could just be belted real quickly onto one of the the arm posts actually that's a good a good idea i haven't I, thought about it. yeah it sounds like a good idea yeah and i don't think it would break the bank either because you could probably get some of that stuff online or amazon just want to look for something that can hold the, whatever your weight rating would be yeah sure okay yeah. thank you yeah you're welcome Anybody else have any ideas about that? Because I am not a builder brain. <laughs> All right. Who else has some stuff? We got some people jumping on too. So I know that Anthony, he's been part of our program for a while. Anthony, you weren't doing water stuff and now you are doing water stuff. Do you have any things you can share with folks? Uh, well, water is fun. Just don't get it in your ear. And don't get a ruptured eardrum while surfing. Because <laughs> I'm currently still partially uh, with hearing loss because of that. <laughs> you know, but me, I mean, I love, I'm like, stop acting so disabled, Anthony. I know, right? But uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, you pretty much covered everything for the most part. I mean, I've never really gotten water in my leg while surfing or doing any type of jumping in the water, even going through waves. Uh, I mean, I've been fishing once. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't really too concerned about uh, the balance. It's just moving slow and kind of being aware of your foot placement, kind of. And that can make the most difference in the world, I feel like. Yeah. Just, yeah, just take your time pretty much at that point. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, no, I didn't do water for a while. I mean, I still don't uh, swim a whole lot because, I mean, uh, even so I'm, I kind of want to try out different like uh, tools that you can use. I heard of this one thing called the shin fin actually, and it actually like straps directly to your residual limb and it kind of gives you a flipper on the end of your limb. So I was thinking about trying that out because I mean, without a prosthetic on, I'm just kind of spinning around like a river otter and it's kind of going in a circle. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> Anthony with the jokes. I love it. So I don't <laughs> swim in circles. I actually lap swim like like at least once a week. Um, and that was an ongoing joke with one of the, you know, all the folks hang out in the, the sauna before and they're like, oh, you're going to do some laps. Should we take the ropes down? Because so you can do the perimeter. Um, <laughs> but what I find is that I don't, if you do swim that way, your opposite shoulder, whether you're above or below knee, gets overstrained because you have more drag, like I'm a left below the knee. So my right shoulder is always like really sore after a long swim because I'm double dutying to try to help make up for the lack of buoyancy because your your stump just sort of cuts through the water. There's no push or give to it, right? What do you got, Chase? Well, I mean, there I, I did swimming for uh, 14 years, something like that, oh. on a couple of different teams and stuff. But they have things called, I always call them pool buddies. And you just, it's like a little floaty you just put between your thighs. And so that way you don't, you can use all upper body and you're not going to swim in circles like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So the, the little knee buoy almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I use that too. That's great. I'm, a, I'm above the knee, you know, mid thigh and I could, I could still fit it, you know, right there. And yeah. That's great. Yeah. I was actually just trying to make a, so that really, um, that is super helpful. You can do a lot of like pull um, right. workouts. 
but the um, amputees are are over adducted. So the word adduction is the muscles that pull your arms or your legs in toward the midline. And because of the way that we're wired and are walking, the inside thigh muscles that we have, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that the inside thighs are like really tight all the time. And so when you swim, if you, if you are an avid swimmer, or you swim regularly, you're just creating more of that adduction. So one of the therapists I worked with um, a while back said, you know, you really should get some kind of an abduction device that actually gives you buoyancy, but that you can squeeze your legs out on. So I'm in the process of creating something um, like that. And I'm not a builder brain. So it's going to be a long time till that gets done. But yeah, that's a great, that's a great tool too for swimming. Anybody else? Jordan, welcome. Where are you calling from? I didn't do this. Oh, uh, Louisiana. Oh, nice. Well, welcome. Hi. Are you an amputee? Yes. Have you, do you do water? Yeah, I actually swam for the first time in like three years the other weekend with my daughter. And before my surgery, I couldn't swim because I had like a wound. And um, so it was like a really big deal. Like it was just really meaningful to be able to do that with her because she's a water baby. Like she was born in the water. She's always in the water and she's begged me for years to swim. I mean, I didn't do much swimming around, but I got in the water. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Are you above or below? Below the right. Okay. And what did you get in with this time? What'd you say? What did you, what did you get in the water with? Like, did you just wear your leg or take it off? Oh, I took it off. Okay. I can't get mine like submerged in water. Uh, for some reason that's what they told me I mean I don't know if that's like true but because it gets wet when it rains and stuff so okay but um, I don't I've never worn it in the water okay well you jumped in and, and I put some links in the chat Jordan I want to make sure that you have access to those are you able to see anything in the chat or is that empty for you because you came in after we had discussed all that take a peek and let me know because if not we can get you that information I'm going to drop um Less like more hearts contact information into the into the chat because there's a couple folks here that may have specific questions like Roni with your uh, the boat stuff and Jordan with your your swim leg and stuff. Um, our team might be able to help troubleshoot things to make it a little easier for you moving forward. So feel free to reach out. We obviously we're a nonprofit. We don't charge for um, anything that we we do or or help folks with. Um, Wafa has been an amputee forever. And I know you know some things, Wafa. What do you know about water for these people? You're on mute, I think. Yeah, I know it's hard to, she probably has her nails all done. You see the microphone? We'll get her on. So Wafa's been in Nibichi, I think. Do you know how long, Michelle? I forget, a long time. Yeah, I don't know. I think you're still on mute, but. Kaya, what are you most concerned about with the water coming up? Cause you're going to Orlando soon with amputees and you know, there's going to be a big pool. Um, truthfully, I don't have that many worries when it comes to like the water. Cause I live in Florida and it's inevitable to avoid water. Um, so, I mean, I use the pool a lot and typically all I do is just throw my leg off and hop in. So I'm pretty comfortable around water with my prosthetic. The only thing that I wish there was like a solution to was like, you know how when you walk onto sand, uh, the actual prosthetic submerges into the sand and then all the sand gets inside of the, the foot. I started like just putting less weight on my prosthetic and that kind of sort of helps with that. But like, do you know, Tina, like, is there an alternative? No, no much no, what, did snowshoes, you... snowshoes? <laughs> <laughs> um, just wider based wider based shoes is the first thing that comes to mind um anything that's narrow is gonna push down more um because there's not a great answer and i think that that's an interesting concept you know what sh sandy showed earlier that had the circle things for the ends of crutches mm -hmm. i wonder mm -hmm. if there's like a clip-on type thing that can go on the sole of a shoe to disperse forces on a wider base or even like take off the foot and put that on it like I noticed like having a wider yeah. foot my first foot was very narrow like 
it's tiny and I have wide feet so I don't know why I got a tiny one but I noticed that that one was like horrible going into the sand I would just into the sand like quicksand but now that I have like a wider foot that actually matches the anatomy of my other foot it's a lot easier yeah I would say so when I wear my prosthetic into the water when I'm on the heart or the soft sand I'm usually either in a running blade Mm -hmm. which is really hard because the levitate blades are tiny so it's great because you get on the pack sand and you're you're smooth sailing get in the water it's comfortable but because it's such a small focal contact point you sink straight down so I've used my long, longer running blade um, by Oser, and there's a larger force or contact base and it's a lot easier on the sand so I'd say just play with play with what you can do to put on the bottom of that even a shoe like just to get out past the the soft sand if you could wear a shoe on your prosthetic foot that's like a wide based flat shoe maybe just to get out past that point um any other thoughts on that guys that's a good that's a good question I have a quick question how do you when you say you just jump into the pool as an above the knee amputee and you pop your leg off where do you put it like are you having to stage things so you have stuff to like lean it on like talk people through that process so it, it typically depends so like if I'm at the gym not the gym if I'm at the pool I'll just leave my prosthetic on a lawn chair like the little bystanding chairs that they have because my prosthetic cannot get wet it is not water resistant the foot is already finicky when it goes into water itself so I try to steer as far away from water as I can so typically I'll just take off my prosthetic and put it on a chair. Now at the beach, it's a lot harder because like you said earlier, getting sand in your prosthesis or on your liner is probably one of the most horrific experiences that I've had. Okay. Because it's so, it's so hard to get all the sand off, even with the scrubber I have. So it's like at the beach, I just have to have like a blanket and I keep it as far away from the shore as I can. But that's still like a disadvantage for me because I don't have a water leg, so, and my other leg was fairly injured in my accident as well, and I'm still recovering from it, so I can't hop to the beach. I basically do what you said to do, you bear crawl to the beach. Well, I scoot, I scoot my little booty to the beach. <laughs> I used to do that, and I'm laughing because it's, it's uh, you just do what you got to do to have the enjoyment, mm-hmm. right? To, um, yeah. But I wanted to mention something. I, I know I joked in the beginning of the segment about <clears throat> how I used to re- use plastic wrap, but have you ever thought about press and seal around it? So it's just crazy. When you were asking earlier if we've ever used any of like those inflatable devices, I have. When I got my first prosthetic in Colorado, my prosthetist gave me this inflatable like sock that covers my whole entire knee and the foot. I tried using that, but mm, no, I didn't try. I don't try. I don't know. I, I don't think I trust the little mechanic things like that. And I'm so paranoid. Yeah, that- no, I, I wouldn't trust that either. But the press and seal. So we use in the medical community, you guys know what a pick line is. It's like to give IV stuff for a longer period of time. It goes directly into like a large vein in the body. So like getting infections or mucky water in or around picks, even shower water, like big no, no. Um, so we would use press and seal in and around pick lines and it held really nicely. And then I would take a waterproof tape, the stuff you could just get over the counter. And I would just tape for extra reinforcement at the top and the bottom of where the the thing would go. And that's kind of what I adopted my prosthetic thing to. So I wonder if you got some press and seal and some waterproof tape, if at least it would give you a little closer proximity to the water so you don't have to do all because I, I know what you mean about the sand and having that electric componentry is really alarming but maybe that could be a system you could think through a little bit and we can brainstorm in Orlando yeah that would be good I definitely want to try something out to figure it out yeah that that's it's uh safer than it feels but I understand the apprehensions um Chase when you go to Orlando are you going to come swimming Yes. I know you're uh, going to pop in the leg off kind of deal. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Uh, my father-in-law is going to pull at his house. We go to every Saturday and Sunday. Um, I've been doing that for, my wife and I have been together for about 15 years. I've been doing that for the last about 15 years. So, but, uh, what, do you, what do you do with the leg? Like, how, I, where, where do you pop I, it? Or? 
uh, just along the side of the pool over this, like, uh, whatever bags you bring or whatever. And he's got a little rail or a little like wall that's on the side. So I kind of sit on there and then pop my butt, my big old butt down on the ground and scoot in. So when you get out, so do you have your liner still on or do you take the liner off? Take the liner off. Okay. So then my, just, the way, I mean, I'm above the knee, so it kind of goes all the way up. So rubbing and that kind of stuff, I always worry about getting wet and, you know, with the rubbing and everything, you know, just kind of making it hurting really more or less. Mm -hmm. That's what I just worry about. But yeah, I, I just get in with nothing on, on my leg. I mean, and then when you, when you take the liner off, are you inverting it so that the outside is still facing out? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, pop it in like I normally would when I take it off. Yeah. I'm just trying to be specific so that for folks that are watching, they get ideas. Um, I leave my liner um, inside out. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, okay. But some people prefer to roll it so that it's outside in. Like when you take your leg liner off, it's automatically inside out, but it's, right. but it's sticky. So people will roll it so that it's back to the original. So the outside is still on the outside. I leave mine or, or when it just when you roll it off, I just leave it that way. Yeah, and that's great for like poolside. I think um, the other piece I wanted to mention is for for folks that are at beaches and stuff. You want to try to get that sticky out of the way. So roll it so that the regular side is out. And I even then take my liner if I'm taking my leg off. I roll my liner up, and then I actually take one of my prosthetic socks and I stuff the the liner into the sock so that I, no blowing sand is going to get into it. Um, cause that can be a big deal, but I wanted to mention this too. It's a simple hack, but I always bring a spray bottle with me and a small hand towel and whether it's the pool or it's anywhere else, even just heat can make the liner get really hot and like uncomfortable. So sometimes just spraying it off with cold water before you put it back on, obviously you're going to damp, you're going to wipe it off, but may cool it down. And that's a way to get sand off of it really easily as well. Does anybody else have any like things that they have to bring to the beach or to the pool um, besides that. I mean, we've talked about the, the spray bottle, the hand towel, the pool noodle we talked about. Um, I always bring a pool noodle and I either wrap it around my ankle and tape it or I cut it long ways and I put it on my pylon if I have a long pylon. And then I tape that up because if I were to lose my leg, um, like say I'm high velocity stuff, water skiing or things like that, I don't want that to go to go south so that's always in my bag does anybody else have any other things that they have to bring to the water cooler beer <laughs> there you go <laughs> i don't know why i forgot that one right now it's truly but yeah um i also bring extra um spf because if you guys take your leg and liner off and you want to get a little sun anybody ever burnt sunburnt their residual limb by a show of hands yeah jordan i'm not alone the worst thing ever because then you're still rolling that liner up over that tender residual limb skin to have to walk. And it is brutal. Um, I've done it. I'm not, a, not happy to say, but I've done it like more than one time. And each time I'm like, you either put a towel over your leg or you have to put extra SPF on your residual limb. If you're out, like say Chase, if you take your liner off and you're floating on a, you get that cooler of beer and you're feeling kind of cozy, want to take a nap. <laughs> you got to watch that stump because Ooh, you won't do that again. <laughs> so extra SPF on the old residual limbs too. That's a good point. Anybody else? Any pro tips? I'm so excited for how this is. But I think we covered a lot of stuff. Buoyancy. The last thing I want to end with is aftercare. I think it's really quick. Rinse your stuff with with cold. Um, it doesn't matter really, but I use cold water. I use a little bit of mild dish soap sometimes if things got a little funky. Um, and if you are someone that your prosthetist has showed you how to take apart your leg. Like I change, I have a socket and I change out my legs. I don't have a farrier coupler that goes on it to make it that easy. So I take off two screws, always the same two. And I put two, and that's the way I get my different legs on my socket. But because of that, I can really quickly look inside and rinse the inside of it and then make sure I tighten them down. I'm not recommending that you all do that unless you have instruction from your prosthetist, because that can be a a, a fall risk, but if you do have that skill set, that's something that would save you necessarily going to your prosthetist every time you're going in the water. But rinse everything out, make sure things are dried off. Do not leave chlorine or salt water on your leg, even for an hour. Like get out of the water and rinse right away. 
Um, for my sleeve, I always take it off the leg at the end of the day, I'll leave salt or chlorine on my sleeve. Um, like I'll rinse it all, but then I'll just leave it wet um, until I get home and I'll take it off. I'll put my other sleeve on my leg and I'll take the sleeve that was just in the water. I'll rinse it really good and then I'll hang dry it for, until the next day. And then for my liner, I always just make sure that um, my liner has been rinsed as well because usually it's not gonna get wet, but I just, it's just a peace of mind thing because it's close to your skin. You never wanna get an infection. If you have a foot shell on your foot, um, you have to take the foot shell off. You have to take the sock off. You have to rinse the foot itself, the carbon fiber foot underneath all of that in order to ensure that the chlorine and the salt's off. Otherwise it will erode that foot over time. And I have had people that I talk with that their foot has broken because it literally just cracked the, the corrosion, cracked the, um, the weight bearing componentry. So it is that important. They make shoehorns and sometimes um, prosthetists have split the back of foot shells to make it easier for people to get them on and off. So make sure you talk to your prosthetist if you don't know how to take off your foot shell and rinse all of that stuff. It's definitely a skill that you should learn. And we can actually talk about that in a future segment because I'm surprised at how many people just don't do it or don't know how to do it. Does every is there are there some folks here that haven't necessarily learned that yet? Yeah, a couple of people. All right, so let's we'll go over that then another time because it's really important. You would be surprised at the things you find in there. Uh, so we'll do that another time. Uh, we are out of time at seven oh one. I can't believe how much time flew. I hope you guys learned a little bit of information before I close this out. If there are any of those links that are of interest to you. Pro Armor, Navigator, iWalk, um, and any of that, make sure you copy it from the chat before you go. I hope that I see you guys next month, um, the second Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. And um, I thank you for coming and I hope that you lead with your best foot forward and I see you soon. What do you got, Roni? Oh, you're on mute, honey. <laughs>